Доброго дня. Greetings. I am Andrea Lochin. You are watching TV program Binding. I was a bit worried today because our guest is a true philosopher who teaches at a university when it comes to psychology and other sciences. I didn't want to look out of place next to him. But we're not going to talk about philosophy today. Don't worry. I wouldn't be able to pull it off anyway. We're going to talk about Ukrainian comic books and the market of comic books in the country, which has rapidly developed this year, starting practically from scratch. Just 10 years ago, I was asked to bring comic books from abroad, because we had none. Our guest, Yevhen Pilecki, knows everything about this business, and he's directly related to the publishing of comic books in Ukraine. So this is exactly the topic that we will discuss with him in this week's program. So Yevhen, this is about graphic prose that we simply call comic books. You know all about them and how they are developing in Ukraine. Our viewers are interested in what is going on with the Ukrainian comic book market. Yes. To be honest, claiming that I know everything would not be modest. But from what I know, I can say that comic books developed the fastest in the book industry. There are even forecasts of specialists who believe that 2019 is going to become a year of a breakthrough for graphic prose. That is because new publishing houses and original comic books are appearing. But it is most likely that we are going to see more translations than original works this year. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember the Ukrainian comic Dal Hopak. It was true hysteria, and you know, it was the first time in my life, because previously everyone asked me to bring comic books from abroad to Ukraine. But this was the first time that I brought Ukrainian comic books abroad. Foreigners viewed them as something unbelievable and kept asking me if they were actually made in Ukraine. We didn't have comic books when I was a kid. For some reason, they were considered something similar to capitalist propaganda. But we were aware of comics. We played with small comic strips in school corridors. They came with chewing gum, and the main character was mostly Donald Duck. Mm -hmm. They were tiny, but we played with them and it was our first introduction to graphic prose. For some reason it was believed in the Soviet Union that things like chewing gum, comic books, Coca-Cola were decomposing the socialist society from within. So for this reason they were prohibited in some way, just like engaging in martial arts like karate and many other things. I don't know why it was this way. From my point of view, perhaps it was because comic books are a very easy way to convey a certain idea or a life story to children. So this begs the question, how are comics different from books for adults? Well, first of all, since we've started this topic, it is worth noting that even in the Soviet Union there were comic books. If you know, the Parrots magazine was published for quite a number of years, and there was a page for kids called Perchinka. The artist Anatoly Vasilenko drew the so-called comic strips, which were smaller than in comic books, about the adventures of Chernolapenko and Perchinka. I remember, that's the way it was. The matter is that the French, for example, don't use the term comic books. They have their own term, bande dessinée, that literally means drawn strips. They call this culture the ninth art, the so-called nouveau art. The thing is that this culture actually has very deep roots, starting with drawings in caves and in the times of the Middle Ages, which depicted biblical scenes or good deeds or something else. And of course, the caricature culture started appearing in Europe in the 19th century. That is exactly why the term for this in English is comic, because the American culture of comic books uses the word comic as something not so serious, and it is quite satirical. Magazines and newspapers started showing images with a logical sequence of frames that also contained words, usually in the so-called clouds, which experts call balloons. Frankly speaking, many consider comic books as strictly a form of entertainment for children. And even when I want to mention this fact, the typical response is, yes, I read something similar when I was a kid. 
Ось. І, е, якщо чесно, багато хто вважає, що комікс – це така несерйозна дитяча забавка, навіть коли мені доводиться говорити про це, кажуть, це якісь там, я в дитинстві щось там читав. But Bandu Cinea, for example, which we also work on, are very serious. Ми займаємося, це дуже серйозні, дуже, я би сказав, нуарні, дорослі історії з... I would say there are many stories with adult plots and images. They are very cynical, so this culture of superheroes can also be considered quite dark. Definitely not for children. As for DC, Batman, I believe many of you saw the film The Dark Knight. I don't think you can say that this is kind of entertainment. I'll be honest here, I know a lot about the French culture when it comes to comics. It so happened. Those who think it's just pictures and that you can figure out what is going on there just by looking at them without any explanation are wrong. You will never understand them without knowing the language. You can keep staring at the pictures, but you will never understand what happens there. That's not how comic books work. From the Soviet perspective, there were something for those kids that didn't need to think. There were just pictures that you looked at and turned the page. There were not something serious. Or maybe there were simply propaganda posters. Yes, propaganda posters. Actually, they're books, and that's how we're going to call them. They're books books simply written and published in a completely different way. It is something entirely new for us. People are just discovering them, so we're going to talk in more detail about these comic books that appeared on our market only recently. We're currently in the Taras Shevchenko Central Children's Library in the center of Kyiv. You can find hundreds of thousands of books here. Naturally, there are also comic books here, but not many because there are very few of them in Ukraine. At the same time, my guest of today's program and I are sure that in a year, two or three, all the shelves in this library will be filled with comic books, and children and adults will be coming here to read comics. Remember, people don't look at comic books simply for their pictures, but they also read the scripts. This is what we're going to discuss with Yevhen Pilecki. So, Katanga, this comic had notable success in France. What has changed in the Ukrainian version? How was it translated? Because the language of comic books, and I'm not saying that I'm a French philologist, but it is fairly specific, not like the ordinary language. It is succinct, and it has to describe a whole episode in a small picture. Mm -hmm. Was it difficult to translate? Who did it? And do we have professional translators who translate comic books and speak the language of visual novels? First of all, it should be noted that we now have a sufficient number of professional translators who work in this sphere. Translating the language used in comics is very specific work. Honestly speaking, this work can be divided into two parts. The first part is when we translate what our characters say or what the narrator says. And then there are also the sounds that convey what is happening in a strip. Now there are linguistic specialists who compile entire lists of words with the correct translations. The punctuation in these scripts is also very specific. And of course, if there are English words like boom or bam in the script, the proper translation into Ukrainian would naturally be buts or bams. Exactly, it is much more difficult than it seems. Speaking of Katanga, I think it became highly popular quite suddenly at the flash of a moment. The reason is that no one expected it. So we decided to translate this Ban du Sine by the famous authors Nuri and Vali into the Ukrainian language. Nuri wrote the screenplay, and many might recall the film The Death of Stalin. It is a satire of the Soviet Union, so this film was based on Fabien Nuri's Bande de Cine. This author is currently considered one of the top French graphic novelists. He's a very good screenwriter, and Katanga is different because it has a very specific dark satirical language. Katanga tells about the events in the Democratic Republic of Congo in the 1960s that to a certain extent are similar to what is happening today in eastern Ukraine. 
Тобто це події, це події у Конго, у Демократичній Республіці Конго 60-х років, коли відбуваються події, які дещо віддалено нагадують те, що відбувається зараз в Україні. Тобто... In other words, Katanga is the so-called LPR and DPR, but in the Congo. It is about the separatists and what is going on there. Therefore, I think that it will be of great interest for Ukrainian readers, seeing as it illustrates similar events that have already taken place in other countries. But when you were choosing a comic book to translate, did you take into account that Katanga has something in common with the separate regions of the Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts? Why did you choose this comic book? Honestly, it was because of the plot and the quality of the graphic content from Sylvain Valli. By the way, he recently posted a Ukrainian translation on his Facebook. The famous publishing house, Dargo, already returned his samples. It was very nice, to be honest. These two factors excited us so much that we decided to translate it. As it turned out, we hit the jackpot, since just a month prior, shows with its authors were aired on French television. The renowned newspaper Le Figaro wrote that Katanga was finished, with all the three parts released in France. We are now translating the second volume. It was very resonant, because it is a powerful visual novel, with a breathtaking adventure storyline after all. But at the same time, it is a political detective story, a novel about betrayal and a novel about human flaws that is written in the satirical style of Sylvain Valli. Ми з вами зараз перебуваємо у центральній бібліотеці імені Тараса Шевченка для дітей тут. And now about the comic book Katanga that was published by the Deepa Publishing House. Сотні тисяч книжок і, звісно, так, тут також є комікси, але їх небагато. It is fairly popular at home in France, even though there was not a major advertising or promotional campaign. But when it came out, it was an explosion. Nobody expected that, but it was quite a sensation. So why was Katanga chosen to be translated? and published here in Ukraine. Was it especially for the Ukrainian audience? It's not that simple, as it turns out. Today's guest of our program knows all the details. I must say everything I said about 2019 is just the beginning. Many adult men are becoming interested in this culture. У нас з'являється величезна кількість, до речі, дорослих дядь уже, які дуже Not just graphic, but I'd say geek culture. It is really taken off in Ukraine. In addition to that, the demand for printed publications is on the rise. В Україну, і тим більше зараз іде новий попит на паперові видання. So I think this will be a year of progress, and then we will enter the area of serious business. For this reason, I believe that while that the whole universe of graphic novels controlled by Marvel and DC Comics are selling hundreds of thousands of copies, Ukraine cannot yet boast of such large numbers. Вони продаються там стотисячними там тиражами. Так інше, то поки що звичайно Україна не може похизуватися такими великими цифрами, але But I hope that it will keep developing possibly in a slightly different way, though not as quickly as it grew in the golden era of comics in the US. Everything is slightly different here. Yes, because even today there is a slowdown even in Europe, when the market is saturated and is simply trying to maintain itself. I think the market in Ukraine is still far from such saturation, and this culture will develop very actively. Stores and publishing houses are appearing that are working directly with Marvel and DC. Or, for example, they specialize in, say, Italian fumetti, or are partners with the French like us. There is also a completely free niche of manga, Japanese graphic novels, in my opinion. It's a very specific thing. So I give here my prediction about this market. 
I think it will be slower than I would like it to be, but I'm quite confident that it will steadily grow over the next years. Yes, but it might be harder to publish our own comic books. Do we have our own illustrators working on them? Yes, we have artists. And now there are novels entering the Western market, like Phaeton. So what is developing? And Voila 2 is appearing. This business is booming. So we have artists and they often approach publishers who work with visual novels, which means that our culture is also developing. Nevertheless, most likely this sphere will be more developed in the next year or three, despite the fact that these processes will be developed in parallel, both the domestic graphic novels and translations. But still, to support this business, taking into account the economic component of the geek culture and the cultural enthusiasts, we need to make money. So they're mainly going to buy Western graphic novels. I'm confident that the Ukrainian graphic culture will steadily grow and develop based on this model and example. I would like to wish you success on this path, because this is a layer of culture that we unfortunately have not yet mastered, though it is very interesting. I also think we should meet again in two or three years, or maybe in five years, and then we will hopefully see what progress has been made regarding what we have discussed today in our program. I wish you success, and I thank you for coming to our studio and introducing the Katanga concept to our viewers. Thank you.